how to fill raised bed gardens for cheap. Raised bed gardening is great. You know, you get to control exactly what's in the soil. You don't have to worry about the native soil having something wrong with it and messing with your plants. You have your own container, your own raised bed to really get started. But it can be expensive to fill a raised bed if you don't know what you're doing. A lot of people make this huge mistake, which is filling the entire raised bed with nothing but uh, soil, compost, things like that. Big mistake, because that's expensive. I mean, you got one of those two foot tall raised beds, that's a huge amount of soil. Um, and not everyone wants to deal with that much soil, and not everyone wants to spend all that money on soil. It can be very expensive to do that. Really a better thing to do to save money and also to benefit your plants because consider it. If you have a super deep uh, raised bed, the, the plants that you plant in there are only going to go so deep. The roots are only going to go so deep. Most plants, uh, the roots will, will not go, you know, to the bottom of that, of that raised bed. The much better thing to do is to instead, at the very bottom of your raised bed, um, you can put some cardboard uh, layers at first, then put in a bunch of logs, twigs, just lots of uh, tree materials, basically. Natural materials, maybe some leaves thrown in there. Um, but, but mainly you're going to have these big kind of blocks of um, woody material. And that's going to form the bulk of the bottommost layer of your um, raised bed. Doing this is beneficial because, think about it, you got these really big chunky layers of uh, wood and other natural material, leaves, twigs. Then, once you have a nice layer of all of that, you then you put on all your soil, like, you know, however much soil you want. Doing this will ensure that your plants have plenty of soil to grow into, and then it also ensures that at least half of the raised bed uh, is filled with something that is not expensive at all. You know, you can go out uh, onto your land, I'm sure, and just get some tree materials for free, basically. And uh, there you go, your, your bed is half filled already. But the other bonus of doing this is that over time, those natural materials, the logs and the twigs and things like that, they will naturally compost and settle down into the raised bed. So continuously, your plants will get more and more nutrition from this natural compost that is just breaking down naturally over time within the raised bed itself. So this not only saves money, but it also saves you a lot of time. Because, again, you don't need a separate compost bin to do this. You're already kind of putting these natural materials into your raised bed directly uh, to start composting uh, just automatically uh, on its own. So this is super beneficial, and it really doesn't take that much extra uh, labor or time to do it. Now, another tip that's pretty important if you want to save money uh, filling your raised beds is consider what else, besides the logs and twigs, what else are you adding to your bed to make up that soil? Are you buying, you know, packets of uh, potting soil, or are you trying to make your own soil? So this, this makes a big difference because you know, of course you could buy some really cheap bags of potting soil and hope for the best, but the problem is that really cheap potting soil is made very cheaply and probably is not going to have the best nutrition for your plants. So that's not great because obviously, you know, you might save money on that soil, but then your plants might be stunted, they might be small, they might not produce the, the produce that you wanted them to, to make. You know, your beefsteak tomato might become a cherry tomato uh, because it doesn't have enough nutrition. So. You really want to, you don't want to skimp on your soil. Now this doesn't mean that you have to spend a fortune, all of your money, your hard-earned savings on soil. Um, I discussed in another video that really the best way to do this is to make your own soil, but try to do it kind of as, as independently as you can. So uh, like one of the tips I, I discussed before was that Peat moss is an important uh, component of soil if you plan on building your own. And you can usually find peat moss naturally. You know, if there is a forest with pine trees anywhere nearby, you can find peat, not peat moss for free. I mean, back in the day, I, I used to just go out into the forest and, you know, 
once these pine trees drop their needles year after year after year, you dig into the ground, it's pure peat moss. It's like just this black gold that you can use for your garden. So you could take that right out of the forest, you know, a few shovels at a time, and uh, use that. Besides that, of course, you can get some compost. Now, for those who are lucky enough to have some um, farm animals, even chickens or goats, you can use that manure for compost. So, you know, chickens, if you have a chicken coop, their bedding can be used uh, eventually for compost and it, the manure. Uh, same with goats and cows, you know. I don't know too many people with cows, but if you have a cow, of course, you can use that manure as well. And if you don't have any of those animals, of course, you will have to go to uh, the store to buy some uh, manure. But fortunately, like cow manure, things like that, it's pretty affordable. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Then the final uh, product of, of the whole uh, soil building process is some sort of material to help drain the soil. Usually vermiculite is best. Um, you could go for perlite, like another kind of stony um, just material to break up that soil and help it drain better. Do not use sand from a saltwater beach. I thought about doing that once and then I realized that if you do that, the soil will be so salty that no, your plants will just die. So don't do that. Freshwater sand, maybe, but you have to do some research. It's, you know, be careful where you get your drainage material. I would argue that building your own soil, it can be a little bit expensive, but it's usually not that much more expensive than just buying big bags of potting soil. And the benefit is that building your own soil you have a higher quality product for your plants. So, I mean, if you do it right, you don't even have to fertilize your garden because there's already so much nutrition, natural organic matter that's gonna keep breaking down and become even more nutritious for your plants. Um, so yeah, you do have to kind of consider what route you want to take. But um, once you figure that out, you know, you can figure out also uh, other ways to save, you know, maybe there's a big deal on compost or peat, peat moss or whatever you want to buy. So definitely look out for sales and deals and coupon codes and things like that. That's always nice and an extra benefit. But those are pretty much the main tips for filling up a raised garden bed for cheap. Now a bonus uh, tip I would offer is that you don't have to buy a super expensive raised garden bed, because of course you can buy the beds themselves, sometimes they're made of metal, sometimes they're made of wood, Some they're, they're two feet tall, three feet tall, you know, whatever you want. Now, in my experience, some of these, I can see that they're very expensive, you know, like some of the metal ones especially, they're nice, they will last a very long time, but they're very expensive. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to spend that much money on a, on a simple raised bed. So you could build your own raised bed to make it cheap as cheap can be. Fortunately, building your own raised bed uh, does not cost that much. Uh, usually less than $100. You just need some really simple, sturdy wood planks, put them together, build a simple raised bed. Obviously, it's going to be more expensive the larger and taller the bed is. And you do have to have a little bit of woodworking experience to make sure everything's sturdy. But besides that, um, I would say building your own raised bed is the best thing you could do. I mean, you, you don't even need wood planks, like if you just have some bricks or blocks, like concrete blocks sitting around, you could put those uh, for your garden bed. You could use logs if you have some big logs sitting around, um, and that sort of thing. And, and worst case scenario, if you, do, you can't do any of that, you could just kind of dig uh, a, a trough into your, your land, get rid of the native soil, put some cardboard down, and then put the, uh, your own soil directly into the ground uh, if, you, if you want to do that as well. So those are just the options uh, you can look into if you're curious about you know, the cheapest of the cheapest ways to um, you know, make sure you have this nice gardening area. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can comment in the comment section down below. Um, if you liked the video, leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I make videos a few times throughout the week, so don't miss those.